<clears throat> the guy is just setting up. How's everybody doing? End of my trading week today. We'll be doing bits. We've been talking about the bits and then the, the smart list associated with bits today. So I'm just going to wait. Hello, Sham. Can you please try and use the chat box? So if you wave your wand over the screen that's being shared, uh, click all panelists and attendees, and then you can use the chat box because that, that stays open on my computer and I can see that very difficult to... Um, to answer the questions. Just gonna wait a little longer and then we'll get going. Different time of the day now. I can't do midnights anymore, guys. It's just too tiring, especially at the end of a trading week because I'm up at 7 a.m. in European time, trade the European morning, and I trade the U.S. morning. So uh, then staying up till midnight, I just it's just playing havoc. So this will be the time of the day when we do these, and obviously they are recorded anyway and on the website. Um, that's the only, that's the compromise I've had to do to keep doing them is to do them at a reasonable hour, which is 6.30 6 p.m. my time. Again, it's been going 11 and a half hours today, so it's still, <laughs> still a long day. How's everybody doing in the lockdown? Okay. Oh, that's good, John. Yeah, well, I'm in um, um, in Spain, um, but my, my day my day job is trading anyway, so I'm, I'm here anyway, so it's good. Uh, lockdown is still on here, so it's going. We're about in the UK, are you, John? I originally come from Nottingham in the UK. Well, whereabouts in the UK are you from? I'm originally from Nottingham, um, but I, I left when I was 17 and joined the army and never really went back because when I left the army, I moved to Spain. So, well, not, you know, it was a couple of years, but. Okay, we're going to get going, guys. So today is the day to ask questions about bits and about the smart list that is associated with bits okay so each week we have a different theme next week will be roller coaster the week after will be the trilogy the combining them okay um 
Norfolk. <laughs> Hi, Trevor. Okay, so just just to just to remind you on the smart list. On the smart list, we have the opportunity to look at the different time frames. Okay, so on the uh, the mega, you know, the big membership, we've got one minute to sixty minute on the futures. Okay, on the stocks, we've just got the daily, but there's some good daily uh, trades coming out there as well uh, on the stocks, uh, and then. One thing you will have noticed, we've taken off QM and corn, but we've added natural gas and copper. They are a lot better trading, okay? So these are really, really uh, a good addition to both the bits and the roller coaster smart list here because there's some great trades. There's some really great trades in these and they respect the... Um, the strategy very, very well, okay? Right, just look at that top right hand chart right now, okay? It just, the volume for this particular candle that we're on, this is this answers you, Hisham. It's just turned green and there's increased volume, but the price in there, we still have there. It's still growing right now. Okay. This is telling me the volume starting to increase again on this three minute. I've got a bit signal here on the five minute. I've got one on the two minute that's just formed as well. So the volume is starting to increase, but I have these highs here. So one thing we've got to consider is this double top, and that is 715. Okay, now that has actually closed now. So it's that order still good, but we've got the 715 here, uh, which is a double top. Okay, so this has got to keep you thinking again. Double top, it's the highs of the day. We're just trying to push through this resistance zone right now. Very, very tough. So then we would look to see, you know, the five minute signal, that's pretty good. 717 or 718, um, pretty good. Right now, though, that three minute signal stop has been broken. So that order's no good. That makes me consider, you know, the two minute as well. It's turned down. It's really struggling to push out of this support and resistance zone. A better solution earlier on in the day is for this to move up, come back to test then get a signal, then go. Hey, Gary. So the idea with bits is it gives you the indication with the volume. Again, high volume candles are green up or red down, okay? But the price action has to squeeze. It has to be smaller uh, or average to the previous 20 candles, and it works it out for you. So in this situation, there was increased volume to the upside. We got a signal, but straight away now, this candle has already got more volume, but to the downside. So that puts, and again, the five minute candle's the same. And you know, with these support and resistance zones, really, really important to understand that these uh, cause, it's like being stuck in the mud, okay? You can push free, but in reality, this one at this time of the day is causing some issues, and these trades are no good but let's have a look earlier on the day in natural gas okay earlier on in the day okay so this is the day so far we've been pretty range bound and that is normal for natural gas during the asian session during the european morning very 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 low uh, volume and then we start to spike up uh, this is 1300. Uh, this is 1, 1 p.m. Uh, European time here. We start to move up. We come back down again, slightly higher support level. Again, this is some basic stuff here, but this is important. Okay. Imagine, imagine this. I, I explained this to my eight year old grandson. Uh, support levels, when in you, if you're starting a, or in the start of a potential uh, bullish trend, for example, imagine a solid stone staircase the next support level pulling back should be higher to form that next step, okay? And then it comes up, 
the resistance is too much, it comes back down, but we find another support level which is higher. This is looking pretty good. Okay, now we're starting to move away. We're starting, this is the US open here. Okay, then we get a bit signal. Where is the bit signal? Just higher than the overnight high here. So let's just annotate this. This is really important. It's not just about following blindly signals, okay? It's about understanding the behavior and what's going off. This was the overnight high here. This signal at 1653 here was above that overnight high. We know we've got a support level here, higher support, higher support. We potentially are moving up here. We've got three candles, which are green, okay? This second candle here gives us the, the bit signal, okay? Really, really important here. We, we, we're looking good. Uh, we, we are moving higher. We're getting higher support zones. This is a good signal. It comes in, it, come, it pulls back down, higher support zone again, doesn't take the stop out, and then just goes for it, hell for leather, and then hits the fourth zone, then goes into all of this trouble here, all of the resistance zone, okay? Bias here for this signal candle is green, okay? So this tells me on the 30 minute time frame, because this is, this is the five minute, this is telling me that on the 30 minute time frame, my bias is bullish. So that's really, really, really important. So this, this signal candle, let's get rid of all these again, let's clear all drawings. This is the signal candle here. This signal candle has increased volume than the previous candle. It also is average or lower than the average range of the previous 20 candles. The bits has already sorted that out for you. You would have got the signal on the smart list, okay, to go long. Whoops. There's lots of fresh air up above. You gotta go for it. Great looking trade, okay? But when you were in this quagmire, in this mud later on in the session, this is a tough looking trade right here, okay? This really needs to push through, test yesterday's high, come back down, then on the way back out, get another bit signal. And again, like anything that I do, it takes patience for that to happen. So now let's go on to a trade that I actually did trade this morning, okay? HG on the three minutes. So again, John, in London, hey, copper is a fantastic uh, instrument to trade all um, European and US sessions. So this is a really great instrument. Let me just clear these annotations a second. Annotate, clear all drawings, okay. So I'm going to go to the for a bit signal, and it was on the three minute earlier on. Okay. Right. So let's tell the story again. During the overnight Asian session, it just could not push up against this resistance zone, okay? Really just didn't have the juice, yeah? Now, I get a signal coming down through here. I, to be honest, this was just near the European Open. I don't tend to take those signals. Um, I, I wait for the, the, uh, the initial spike, first 15 minutes and then see what happens. So first, talk, first I get, let me annotate this. Okay, first signal is here, two, three, four, four, okay? It doesn't take me and it takes a stop out. I get another signal here at two, three, four, four, five. I actually like the two, three, four, four price, uh, okay? It gives me another one here. Yeah, it gives me another one here. You've got to take it, okay? I actually took this one. Why? Because I had a really tight stop and entry. Two, three, four, six was the, the stop. Entry two, three, four, four. The risk to reward was massive, okay? 
You don't believe me? This is from my live account this morning. $312.50 one contract. Okay, that was the profit here. Live, this was the trade this morning. Okay, and basically, this was so simple. Really, really tight, contracted um, candle. Okay, 2344 entry. It, it triggered, went sideways, didn't really want to go down here, and then just went for it. Hell for leather. And I actually, uh, when it got to this next support zone, I just flattened it. And you can see then that's when you get the range bound period. Keeps coming along the support zone, breaks through. Okay, was there other trades there this afternoon? Maybe I was busy trading something else. Okay, um, but there you go. That was the trade of the day for me on HG using the bits indicator. But I had to look left. What was it struggling to do? It was struggling to move higher. Then I broke this pivot here. Okay, the recent pivot low here was broken. Let's put that in pink. So when you're trading a good double top, remember you go short below the pivot. So it came, it tried again, it came down. It tried again, it pushed through this pivot point. Again, chart craft, trade craft, technical analysis. You need to know this stuff. Okay, then we get these signals. So what does it do? It breaks through this pivot point here, breaks through, comes back to test, fails, breaks down again, we're getting these signals, we've got to go short down to the next support zone, okay? Really, really important. So again, these signals were alerted to me on the BITS um, smart list. Uh, ding, 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 okay, look at it there, really looks good to me. Looking left, telling the story, speaking to myself, and I do that a lot. Uh, and then I just took the trade and that's great. I mean, that is picture perfect. You know, no chart is pretty, but this is a pretty much picture perfect looking trade for me. Okay. And that was the trade of the day. Um, again, made me good money. HG right now. So, one thing I do have, guys, is this, not a lot of you that um, see me um, trading the 5K club, you'll notice I've got Elliott Wave down on the bottom too. Uh, on the top, I've got bits. Um, now, you, we can see here, we've had a wave four pullback. It's not a pretty one. The same on the three minute, again, not a pretty one. But we've got fifth wave target zone back up at that resistance zone on HG. Okay, I've got a bit signal that's formed on the five minute. What's my risk to reward here? So if I pull that over again here, we look at HG, 2347 is the entry, 2345 is the stop. Really tight stop and entry here. Really, really, really tight stop and entry. The only thing that's putting me off right now is this Okay, guys, sorry, I had a bit of an issue there. Can you still hear me? It said I had an issue with my uh, audio there. Okay, so this is 12 bucks 50 per. Um, per tick, okay, we've had a high here. Uh, that high was 2347 and it rejected for now. So again, I like to use um, the, the, the volume profile here uh, to give me a sense of where uh, the support and resistance is as far as uh, volume traded, if you like. And on this particular three minute time frame now, we can see there's a lot, this is my point of control. This is where the most volume is. So we can see, especially here, this candle here, Let's highlight it. 
Again, I'm not going off track here. You need to understand a lot of stuff when you're trading. It's not just following a signal. See this candle here? Okay, that was a high volume candle from the point of control rejection. Okay, rejection. Yeah. So there's a lot of, again, we've got a high volume candle here. We've got lots of high volume around here. So we've got a rejection in here. This is how the, the computer has told me this is the point of control. This is where most of the volume in it is. And right now, that volume is sending everything back down. So this signal for me at the moment is a little bit dodgy. Okay. How do I add volume profile to... Toth. Okay, let's, let's go through that and go through my settings. Uh, it's a good time to do that. So in the beaker, uh, you're looking, when you search in your studies, you're looking for volume profile automatic, Gary. Okay, so when you find it, so if you type volume in here, um, volume profile, volume P, there we go. Okay, so when you've got volume profile, you need to go into your settings. Again, this is recorded, you can go and look at it. So what you need to do is have a look at this. So you want automatic. You can go tick size as well. But if you're new to this, go automatic. Custom ROPO height one, you look at hour. Multiplier by four, again recorded, you can look at this. On expansion, no, profiles a thousand. So what this does is this time per profile and multiplier, that's a four hour segment of time, even on this three minute chart. So uh, that gives you a really good indication where the volume is uh, that's going to cause you uh, any, any issues or actually help you. OK, for me, I would like to, you know, I would probably look for a short coming out of here because I know this volume profile is sending everything down. OK, so the rest of the settings show point of control. Yes. Show value area. Yes. The value area percentage is 70, okay? So that's 70% of uh, all the volume traded in that hour. You, that's where it shows. And then the opacity is 25. So it's a little bit see-through, okay? So the main thing is, this is the value area, the green to the pink. So this is 70% of the volume traded in this last period here. Um, and you can see where this point of control is, really, really strong resistance. Keeps pushing it back down. Something I'm working on at the moment are the harmonic patterns right now. Um, this won't be coming out as part of Trade the Fifth. This will be, uh, I'm going to start a, a business uh, that's going to be like Spotify with add-ons like this. And we'll just keep adding them on and you'll just pay an annual fee, but that's, that's a way down the road. Uh, but for me, I can see this, this HG coming back down here uh, to complete this, um, this the bat uh, harmonic pattern. Um, so, you know, I'd still like to see if it was a bit signal uh, to continue to move down and also then uh, give me a signal with some high volume right now. But again, what I'm talking about is reasons not to trade. Yes. Uh, and that is, if you can't find a reason, it's a good looking trade. But this point of control, really, really, really difficult to, um, to, to push through. Okay. Uh, so that's the reason not to trade that trade. Okay. Drawing channels on toss. Uh, very simple. Uh, so let's go to, um, okay. So if you're day trading, if you are day trading, you need to go to the 60 minute time frame. Okay. If you are swing trading off the daily, you need to go to the weekly. Yeah. Very, very simple. So what I do first of all is I've got on the 240. Okay. This gets a little bit more technical, but on the 240 time frame, you can see on HG, I've got a nice bullish channel forming right here. Okay. We've got the points touching here and this this goes back quite a way uh, and again I've got my linear support and resistance zones in there as well uh, but the main thing is I'm touching lots of times on the top here and my center line is very 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 strong but if I want to go and on a shorter time frame like the 60 minute just to see where we are currently okay 
And this is, you know, again, this will show you how to draw, draw the channel. So I, I can see here, you know, the last couple of days, few days this week, we are moving down. Okay. So go to the drawing tools, go to this parallel line here, not regression, just this channel line, click it. Now, You've got to look by eye, but I can see this bottom trend line is probably where I want to be. So I'm going to click on this low here and I'm going to extend it out. And I'm going to touch three, four times there. OK, really strong. Click once. Then I'm going to bring it out. The next thing I want to do is see where I've got lots of touches on the center line. It doesn't matter if I've got not many touches on the top, but I want to make sure the center line is pretty pretty strong okay and we've got a lot of support and resistance down through there now right now it looks to me like we are breaking out of this channel okay this is the channel. Let me explain why this is the channel. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Two touches is a line. Six touches is a trend line. Okay. This is, this is the trend line that we're following. Then we're extending out. How we extend out is really important in that we've got to have more touches on the center line because this is our uh, point of control, if you like, for this channel. So let's just look at those right now. I'm going to annotate those. Main thing is I've got this high, okay, rejecting at this center line and coming back down again. Then I've got some clustering around here. Okay, we push down, we come back up, we test here. We test here and clustering around that center line. We've got a push up through there. We've got all of these tests, both support and resistance here. Okay, so this is a really strong center line. I've got a touch on the top line here. Right now, we've broken out of this bearish move, okay, on the 60 minute. Yeah. We've broken out of that channel. We came back in to test here. It failed. We've came back in today to test. It's failed. Okay. Does that make sense, Trevor? It's about understanding behavior. Okay. This is all I talk about is behavior. The channels, the linear support and resistance zones, really important to frame the chart. So when you are trading, and we're talking about the bits today, uh, you have a really good understanding of what's going on. Yeah. So let's go back. Let me restore that. Let's go back. Let's see how it's doing right now. Oh, it's pushing up. Okay. So right now we know we've broken out of that channel. We've got even more bit signals coming up now okay this thing really wants to push up we've got a higher higher entry here you know but look look left look where we found resistance before going to go to the top that high there and we've got to go all of these top of those wicks here you're going into trouble. Yep, yeah, it might push through. Okay, but it doesn't look brilliant. Yeah. Um, so again, there's there's issues in the way of that. You need fresh air. Okay, let's have a look at stock then. Do the same sort of analysis. We're having a slight little bounce on indexes right now, today, because we, we had a negative day yesterday. It's probably it's still reasonably, net, you know, we're, we're, we're flat on ES right now. Um, it's still, for me, still negative. So JPM on the daily. Right, one thing I have done is um, 
on the daily, I take the the, um, the bubbles off, but you know, when you, you can put the bubbles back on with your bits here, for example, just click yes, click okay, click apply, and when it does its thing, you see the bubbles, okay? Now this was a great, great um, bits signal to go short on JP Morgan there. Uh, so uh, this was on the 11th, that nice contracted candle increased volume, yeah? We had previous entry here at 88.51. This one was an 88.44. What you do, you go in, you get took in that day, it gaps down there yesterday. If you're in this right now, Trevor, you should be risk free. Okay, you don't want it to pull back into here. Look at the volume that's been traded today. So far, it is gray, so it's low volume, but we haven't finished the day yet. It is engulfing the previous day, not good. We are having a bounce though. So that's, I'm just gonna go on here and I'm gonna go to equities, I'm gonna put the volume on there. Uh, to be honest, by the time this day has finished, we will probably equal, if not increase the volume there. Uh, for me, if I was in this right now, I'd be getting out because it's a bit, it's a bit signal. But to be honest, I would look at this on multiple time frames. Uh, I, you know, we took a big profit today on a on a trade that's only been in two days, uh, shorting a stock. Right now, I'd have been looking on the on the on the sixty minute. Okay, so we entered at eight eighty eight forty four. Two great days taken us in. Now we've got to look to manage this trade on a smaller time frame. Okay, so our, you know, 88.44 was our entry. Then we could have used a 60 minute roller coaster to actually, um, you know, manage it if you wanted to. But for me, it, I mean, look at this bit signal on the 60 minute as well. This big candle here is a big problem for me, um, you know, uh, you got to go down the time frames. I, I'd be out already. Well, as soon as we started to move up above this pivot here, I'd be out. Okay. Um, yeah. Once it starts moving back on you, and we are, you know, we're going green on a few stocks today. Uh, you've got to think with the bits. The bits isn't a longer term swing. Okay. The fifth wave, the um, roller coaster, they're longer term swings. When you are trading a breakout, you are trading a breakout, okay? You've got to be very tight with your stops and be happy with your money. For me, the one-to-one -one going through there, I'd have closed by the end of that day yesterday, um, that, that, that me personally. Okay, let me have a look at MGI. Bear with me a second. Uh, somebody just messaged me somewhere. Where was it? Okay. MGI. How would I frame this, Isham? So let's go to the weekly first. Let's zoom out. Ooh, that had a big volume spike there. Wow. Okay. So. Cheap stock volume is probably pretty crappy most of the time. I'm going to put a, is a very wide support and resistance zone here, but it's important to see why I'm doing this. I'm going to go to the top of that wave four, and I'm going to go to this support level here. Look at this uh, top of this, um, this candle here as well. Support level at the top of this zone here. So this is a fat um, support and resistance zone, but this is important. This is the weekly. This is my main support and resistance. This is going to affect this trade right now. Yes, there's one all the way up here, but is this is this going to affect this trade right now? No, I can still put that on. Okay, we'll do this quickly because again we are we're bits here, and uh, today this is covered in other training courses that we have. So we do that there, that's the weekly. Oh, we've got a channel, I think we've broken out of this weekly channel here because that was pretty parabolic. 
We've gone pretty rangy now. We've got a nice support zone here on the weekly as well, which is very thin there. Okay, Let's zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so this is where we are right now. We've got major support going on. I mean, it's freaking one dollar, you know. Um, it's, you know, it's not going to go much lower. You don't, you don't go to zero dollars in a fifth wave, tar fifth wave target. It was a good fifth wave move, though. Uh, pretty decent volume. Uh, have we got a channel right now? All I'd be interested in on the weekly right now is this channel here. Okay, so... I'm going to be looking at that there. Oops. Click. Center line important to me. Click. So this is the weekly time frame, don't forget. So all I'm interested in right now is one, two, three tests on the bottom. Uh, we've got some coincidence with tests and support here on the linear support and the center line of this channel. Very, very crucial. This area here. Let's annotate this here. Not the sort of stock I'd trade too cheap. Uh, but this area here, very important. Coincidence with the center line. Uh, acting as support the same as well as this linear support and resistance zone. We've got um, good su uh, support resistance there and here as well. Uh, nice here. This is a good, we've got a touch at the top here and here. This is where the channel is right now, okay? If you're looking for a long, for example, let's go, to, whoops, let's go down to the daily. Okay, so that's that weekly channel. This is now on the daily time frame. Okay, had a big spike yesterday, but failed to push it up. Okay, again, very cheap stock, not a lot of volume for me, it's not the sort of stock I'd be looking at. Um, you know, there's no trade there for me right now on the bits because it's too cheap, there's not enough volume. Um, but that's how I'd frame that. Okay, no problem. Okay, so let's just go to just see if there's any signal six. I'm just going to go back now to um, look at this lot. While we've been talking, it did test it and failed. Come back down to the point of control. Okay, so we've got 6S and 6E. Let's go to 6E. Got signals on the bits on the smallest here. Okay, so this is the three minute. We've got signals come up on 6E and 6S. So we're going to look at them. We're going to work through them. Okay, and this is a good I, This is a good thing why I've changed here because these short signals are coming on the three minute. Let's have a look at the three minute here. Okay. Let's look at these lows. Let's just draw these recent lows in here. We need to understand if we're going to break through the overnight lows. I'm going to take in there. Okay, so our bit signals are before here, our risk reward is pretty crappy, okay? Bias is good. We've got a false breakout on the stochastic. That's fantastic. But when we look left, we can see a high volume rejection here. We can see a high volume rejection here. What's to say it won't happen again, okay? Don't take the trade. Understand what's going off. I'd prefer it. If we broke back up above here and we look for a signal there, a bit late in the day now, Europe's closed, going to be very slow. Um, but, you know, that's, that's the way it is. So we had one on 6S as well, Swiss franc. Uh, but again, we're late in the day. It's going to be very low volume.
Okay. So I don't trade this a lot, so there's not a lot, there's no support resistance zones in here. Um, but again, signals come up. We've got to look where those, where those lows were. Let's put the overnight low in here. Let's go to the tip of this rejection. Bias is good, it's bearish. I wouldn't trade this right now. You can see this flat price action here. That's lack of volume because Europe is closed. This is a currency pair. Okay, most of the volume's gone from it now. Um, but again, if this was another time of the day, this is where it rejected overnight, overnight lows. Okay, if it didn't break the stop for the entry, risk reward one to two. The fourth target zone, which is a one to two risk reward, is right on the tip of there. Looks pretty good. Wrong time of the day, but again, looks really, really good. Not looking at Elliott Wave today, Trevor, it's just bits, okay? So, you know, that, that is pretty much, you know, stops, okay? I mean, you know, to be honest, there's not a great deal of um, risk here. Uh, I, I'd probably take the stop of this one, 10274. So let's look at that on a dome so you can see what it looks like. 6S. So here, 10274 stop. Entry 10269, down here. Very tight stop and entry there, okay? Very, very tight. So, you know, I'm gonna put this on. Who, you know, it's not, it's not a lot of money. 10274 is the stop, okay? So if this gets taken in, I'm only one, two, three, four, five ticks, yeah? Five ticks to the stop loss. Very small risk for potential good reward here. We can see now, look, another bit signals forming. So there is some increased volume to the downside. The only issue is when you're trying to trade these currency um, futures, at this time of day, Europe is closed. Okay, so when Europe's closed, two thirds of the Forex traders have gone home. Uh, so the volume is gonna be very, very low. So this on a normal, you know, earlier on in the day, this sort of setup looks pretty good because again, look, this is posting that 10274 stop where we think that's where we'd be good. We've got a 10269 entry, okay, bit conservative, it's got a push down, but even with that, we've got to the fourth target zone. So we've got a lot of fresh air. Does that make sense? Any questions on that setup? Again, that setup came from the ding dings, telling me there is a trade on 6S. That's where the entry is, 10269, okay? Tells me where the target is. That candle's now, you know, that is now presenting another one. So, that audible alert on that smart list is very important. You, even with my 10 screens, I cannot have every single time frame for every single um, futures contract uh, to trade or the stocks or anything else. So we need to understand what's going off. So the smart list is designed to give you, you can pop them out. If you just want to trade three and five minutes, okay, move them or put them somewhere, uh, you know, above or whatever it is. On another screen, mine goes on the top and I have it on. When it goes ding, ding, I have a look. I look at the chart, yes or no. Find a reason not to get in and don't trade it. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah. I'm going to minute, guys. Just doing a bit of support there because so we're seeing some crazy numbers in uh, in small list. The data data's got corrupt somewhere. Okay, so any questions on that 
you know, came from the smart list, look at the chart, look left, got some good um, momentum to the downside, Another, you know, different part of the day. Um, when things are moving, there's more volume. We've got a good risk reward and looks pretty good to me. Okay. I'm going to take that off now because it's not moving and I'd be here babysitting that trade all night. Cancel all 20, 30 times. Um, okay. It doesn't anticipate the high volume. It measures the volume all the time. Let's go to something that actually is moving. Um, so ES. So as soon as the volume increases, let's go to the one minute, okay, on ES. Whoa, hang on a sec. There's an issue with data uh, worldwide at the moment. So that shouldn't have happened there with the chart, but it did. So what happens is the candle at the moment is going down. Okay, it's cyan because at this moment in time on this one minute candle, the volume is lower than the previous candle. Now, even during this candle, if the volume increases, it changes color. Now, I can't guarantee it's going to happen while we're looking, okay? But you'll notice on the active live candle, if it has more volume, as soon as it goes over there, okay, that had more volume just as it closed than the previous candle, okay? So it doesn't anticipate, it measures, yeah? So this volume here on ES on this one minute candle had more volume than that one. Now, at the moment, this candle's just started. Okay, so it's grey, it's bullish at this moment in time. If, if this had more volume right now than this previous candle it did when it closed, it would turn green. So it doesn't anticipate, it just measures live. And then when the candle closes, uh, it'll be up tomorrow. So when the candle closes, okay, like this one here, let me annotate. This candle closed green, okay? As soon as that candle closes, the algorithm works out, actually, yes, it had more volume than the previous candle, yes, it is smaller or average to the previous 20 candles, it's a signal, this is where you should go long. Before that long is entered, the stop loss was taken out, you cancel the order. Yesterday's recording should be going up today. Let me just check live. Um, uh, is it up yet? Let me just check on the website. Let's have a look. I know I, I, it was all rendered and everything this morning. No, it's not up yet. Okay. No, I will not, Trevor. The times have changed. It's 6.30 p.m. my time, which is 12.30 p.m. your time. I will not be doing midnight webinars anymore. As much as I love you guys, I need my sleep and I'm getting old. So I've changed the times permanently to this time. It is recorded so people can watch it. Okay, so 
I want to go back to NG a second, see what's going off there. So again, we were looked at. We looked at these, and this there was, you know, there was too much uh, going against us to actually get in on this trade. You can see how it pulled back. We did get a short signal here. Why didn't we go short, anybody? Anybody answer that one? Okay, I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw something in there just to show you where the signal candle was. Oops. Okay, this was the signal candle. Why did we not trade that? Come on. Anybody? Nope. Look at the bias. It is yellow, it is neutral, it is not red, okay? The bias is not red. So the, the actual bias on the 30 minute, okay? So we're on the, on the three minute chart here, it looks at the 30 and it's telling me I've gone from bullish to neutral, not bearish. All right, okay. <laughs> so we don't take the trade and look what happened. It came back up to test. Now, if this, resistance holds and it's lower than this resistance and starts to move back down okay this will change to neutral then we start to change to red if we do get a signal then that is a better looking condition for a trade using the bits okay So some more signals came through there. We've got HG long. Let's have a look at that one. So again, the ding dings came through on the three minute. I've got ES HG six uh, micro six B. I discount that wrong time of day. MES and ES. So you know, there's quite a lot going off with ES on the three minute. Let's have a look. HG first again. Resistance up above, no good. Let's have a look at ES on the three minutes. Look left, where's our overnight highs? Well, oh, we're there right now. Uh, uh, what was the overnight high there? Ah, oh, okay. There's our overnight high there. That's resistance and obviously in here at the open and close did act as it has tried to push through there. Okay. But right now, this looks like it wants to push up, but we've got the overnight high as a bit of an issue. Okay. Uh, so to me right now, it looks pretty inviting. To be honest, this was the trade here. Okay. Because I got some fresh air, not a lot, but you know, a decent amount. Right now, if I, I need this to push through and get a signal above there. You know, I go to my stocks board and I look at that and I'm seeing 60% is still red. Well, the other board looks better. But we're only just green for the day. It's only, remember, when we look at the target zones, these are our risk rewards, if you like. So that's our stop. Again, if you're going to take this, look where the stop is compared to this previous pivot. You need to come a little bit below there. So, you know, 2814 dead would be your stop. Your entries here, your first target, which is 1 to 0 0.5, is right in that overnight high. 
preferably you would like to actually get a you know a, a bit signal above there so it's got to break the overnight high. Sometimes when it pops out of that overnight high, it will go hell for leather, okay? So the false breakout on the top here denotes a strong bullish trend, so that's good. You know, that is good. When we pull back against it here, okay, this is probably a wave four, but we're not doing that, we're doing bits today. Uh, it went back and went overbought false breakout. Good, denotes a bullish trend on this time frame. So there's a lot going for it. I just, you know, I'd be skeptical. Um, you know, these overnight highs can cause that rejection and come back down again. Uh, I wouldn't trust Renko bars as far as bits is concerned because we need uh, really good uh, volume calculations. Uh, for uh, it to work, uh, so I wouldn't I wouldn't advise it. I would just use normal candles. It picks up the volume and it's good to trade. Okay, if you start going to Renko and range and everything like that, you're starting to muddy the water. Okay. Yeah, I found a reason not to trade. Yes. Do we get any more signals there? 6B long, again, wrong time of the day, but we'll have a look at it. Let's see what, you know, see what it is. Ooh, going into the point of control there. That's gonna be resistance. It's above on the five minute. There's a five minute signal there as well. We've just got bullish bias. It's an ugly looking chart today, isn't it? Yesterday's low seems to be too much for this right now. Did test the support and resistance zone, but we have got recent pivot point here. Just lately guys, 6B does follow ES quite well. So, Top of the wick, a wick in there, top of the wick, wick in there, top of the wick. That's big rejection at the moment, okay? So we then look at the bits signal, okay? Zoom in big here. This one here has a, you know, one to one. So this is the, the, the second target zone. The blue dot is the first. That's a second, so that's one to one, okay? This one forming right now is one to one as well, okay? So this one's just been triggered on 6B. What's ES doing? Again, look at the correlation, 6B, ES. 6B moves with ES. Where's ES approaching right now? The overnight highs, okay? I've only got a one to one um, risk to reward on this one, okay? Uh, We've just turned bullish, but we've turned bullish before and we've had some one candle wonders here, okay? We are above the point of control, which is pretty good. There she goes. Is ES going with it? No. Okay. That's not bad. There she goes. Yesterday's low. Does it push through? Not yet. So we're through the first target zone on this particular bit signal here. Okay, gap down a little bit on the change of the candle there. Remember, we we're only one to one. If you are gonna do a one to one to the resistance zone where it's rejected pretty violently in the past, if it goes through this 50% target zone, again, which is not, there's only five ticks, you gotta be risk-free, yeah? If you're going to take that as a trade and you've only got a one-to-one -to, -one to recent rejection, you've got to go risk-free as soon as it gets through that 0 0.5, which it's done. But look where it found initial resistance, right at yesterday's low. Okay, so right now, you've got to be at risk-free. My inner circle knows this very well. 
you know, if we're going to take a trade like this, we are going to be risk free because it's rejected here so many times. You need fresh air. Okay, guys, remember reasons not to trade. If you can't find them, like I did on HG this morning, you go. Uh, and it's about patience. It might be a sniper. It's about using the smart list together with your chart. Uh, and, you know, for me, I use the bits, the Elliott Wave, and, um, and the roller coaster. You know, we had a great trade. Uh, our fifth wave trade on NG the other day. Um, where is it now? Did I put it on? I think I put it on the Facebook page. Did I? Let's have a look. Bear with me. Yeah. So this was a pretty much perfect move down, okay, on NG on a fifth wave move. Yeah. So we, we moved down, we came up, we fell short of the uh, support and resistance zone. Everything worked out right, go down. I actually got out when it found support here. Some of the guys still uh, stayed in and hit the fifth wave target zone. So, you know, we did bits today. What I'm trying to show you is these indicators give you signals for different market conditions. And what I've tried to do over the years is try to find strategies that give me those signals in different market conditions. Uh, so hence these three strategies, because these are the ones of the, the strategies that I use. Bits is just one of them. Bits is really good for copper, for NG, but also Elliott Wave works as well in the right market conditions. You just need to understand the behavior. I keep saying this, it's all about the bloody behavior. Okay, where's the S going right now? Let me have a look. Did it push through? It did. It did push through, look. Now, on the five minutes, we do have a bit signal forming. Whoa. We're bullish bias. We've cleared the overnight high. Actually through the midpoint there, looks pretty good. It's quite a big risk. So you would probably go micro on this one, depending on your account size. You know, you're talking 2819.25 is your um, stop. 2831, or 2832 is your entry. That's a lot of points, that's a lot of ticks. So you wouldn't trade this with the big boys unless you've got a big account. You've got to be sensible here. It's quite a wide gap between uh, stop and entry. So you're going to use micros, okay? You've got to wait for the candle to close. If it closes and this goes away, that's because the, the range of the candle is too large for the signal. I do see a signal forming. You can see it's gone, okay? The signal's gone. There is a signal on the 15 minute forming, uh, 2836 with a 2810. So it's a 26 point, um, it's a 26 point gap here. Yeah, 15 minute candles just closed, okay? So if you're gonna trade this bit signal, looks you know reasonably good. Are we gonna get a run into the close? Maybe we've broken the overnight high. It's a sensible looking trade. So if you're going to trade this, you've got to go micros because there's a 26 point. Four times 26 is a hundred tick freaking distance. Okay. So even at um, you know using one contract, it's still quite a big move. Yeah. So let's just give it a go. Two eight three six fifty. Two eight three six fifty. Yeah. Let's go one contract micro. But the stop is at 2809. You can see how massive that range is on this 15 minute candle. 
This is why you've got to be very, very careful. You don't want to use the big boys, okay? You don't want to use the big boys because uh, the risk is way too much, okay? So the bias is green, okay? We're above the midpoint of yesterday's range. We could have a bullish run into the end of the day. Uh, I'm seeing highs of the day on some of the stocks coming in. Some of the ETFs are posting highs of the day right now. Uh, you know, we look like we could have a bullish run into the end of the session. You know, this is the trade you'll be looking at, but you've got to go micro. It's on the 15 minute time frame. The gap, even on a micro, you'll probably lose $100 if it goes against you. Okay. That's the sort of trade you should be looking at. It's cleared the danger. Okay. The five minute wasn't good enough. It was too long. Let's go to 15 minute, but now the risk is quite high. You've got to make those decisions yourself, your big boys and girls. Okay. So I'm going to cancel that because I'm going to get going because my dinner's ready. Okay. So hopefully that's helped today on the uh, bits and the smart list. Um, you know, those signals do come up on the smart list live. Okay. So on the 15 minute, that signal was you know, did appear. And you've got to make the decision on there if and when you want to go there. So we look at the S. This is the 15 minute. It's got a little lightning flash next to it and it's telling you to go long at that point. That's where the stop is and these are the targets. You then go to the chart, do the work. Actually, that looks pretty good, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, we just talked about all of that this afternoon. Uh, Gary, I'm just going to go for some dinner, so I'll ping you, yeah? Okay, guys, thanks very much for turning up. The recording will be up tomorrow. Thank you.